Hi, this is Greg here, and welcome to Just a Meme Podcast, where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Today, we have Benny joining us from Thailand, where he's working on a new approach to sharing knowledge on websites enabled by web monetization. Welcome, Benny. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, so jumping straight into the questions, um, tell us a bit about yourself. What has your journey been so far? And uh, yeah, what, what kind of, how did you get here today? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I'll just start with the basics. Um, I was born and raised in Germany. And the reason being why I'm in Thailand now is um, I was studying industrial engineering back home. And so I was pretty much set for a great career, maybe in the German automotive scene. I'm from Munich where BMW is headquartered and so on. So everything was primed, but I had the opportunity to go abroad two times while I was studying. I went to Thailand once and um, to China and those experience somehow gave me the, the urge um, that I really wanted to find a way to work from wherever I want to work instead of having to ask for allowance by someone. And yeah, my dream since then has been, I will say, I graduated in 2018. And that was also the time right after graduating um, that I, with my best friend, um, we started our first company, which is in e-commerce. We are still running that company and still uh, fighting and working on it because of course everything um, is much lower than you initially expect. This is in the Amazon space. So we sell products on Amazon basically. Oh, is it FBA? FBA, so, correct. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, and yeah, maybe some people know. <laughs> and that was pretty much the start for me getting in touch with making money online. Um, even though this was not the initial plan to really um, also sustain my life because I said everything works a bit slower than expected. And so we always had to also check for other opportunities. Um, but now about two, three years in, I also discovered other things, um, which I'm doing some freelancing work on the side, which is also related to e-commerce. So I help other sellers. And yeah, that's pretty much for me what I'm doing now, how I can sustain my life while not being at home, <laughs> while being pretty much wherever I want to be, where there's an internet connection. And for my crypto introduction that was also while i was um having an internship in china while i was studying there oh, cool. and i remember that was 2017 <laughs> when the whole bull yeah, run started the and, first time yeah right and i was part, definitely one of those who learned i heard about bitcoin before but only here and there i never really dug into it and then once it broke the ten thousand dollars and it was written everywhere i was like okay let's dive in a bit and then I dove in a bit um, financially up until to the point where at some time it's maybe I should learn a little bit more about where I'm putting my money there, uh, yeah. <laughs> putting money there because it was a significant amount of money for me yeah, and yeah. still would be so I thought like yeah, um, maybe I should read a bit and then I think going from learning about Bitcoin a little more than seeing all the different coins and tokens and projects coming out one day after another um, over time i put more and more time into learning about ripple and xrp in particular just yeah. because i think it also started by me looking up which um crypto is the easiest to sell and um, to send back and forth between different exchanges and then i heard it pro probably xrp is the fastest mm. one and and I started looking more into this and I think then I got stuck a little bit um, around just learning Ripple's use case yep. and then from Ripple to XRP and also went to other projects that are working on XRP related use cases and the main one that then sparked my biggest interest so far has been Coil and uh, web monetization and Interledger, Ecosphere, something, whatever the whole thing is and since then i just followed the news basically so i never I, I didn't get involved i think i was involved on twitter on reddit uh, yeah. as a commenter, as an observer but i'm not a developer myself so this whole thing how things are being done is, is until today still kind of a black box for me yeah yeah 
but then coil and web monetization was one thing that I could really understand at some point. So uh, this makes so much sense. And it makes even for me as a layman in these, uh, this field, it makes a lot of sense that the internet needs some change because I have been using ever since ad blockers became a thing, I have been using them yeah. and I know at the same time, I know that it's not a good thing because I know people who are running websites and if their revenues based on ad impressions and so on, I know it's bad for them. And I'm definitely using the internet a lot. I'm online pretty much half 12 hours each day, I guess sometimes. And um, if you then think about, okay, if maybe if I make the experience better for me, but everyone else who's putting in the work for me to have this uh, content to enjoy, then something is broken. Something mm. should be in a different way. And so this is pretty much how I got into crypto, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so you're coming from the kind of creative side. Had, had you done anything on YouTube? I think I remember mm. chatting to you before where, where we were chatting about like the YouTube channels and stuff and how the, the right. system is quite... Um, well, they take a massive cut basically every time um, yeah. and how we could think about web monetization as a, as a different business model. Um, um, so for so me, been, yeah. yeah, sorry. And for the content creation from my side, it also pretty much, um, I think I had several blogging attempts that were always related to my traveling, but yeah. I never really pu um, pushed through with it and, uh, um, lost interest over time mo mostly because I put up so high expectations for myself that I can never fulfill them and um, if you think about from starting a blog or starting a YouTube channel um, the successful creators will always say uh, don't focus on making money and just do whatever you're passionate about but if you want to make money online then you in a, in a, in a unavoidably get into this direction where people tell you like how to make money online and then what we see a lot of now is people making content about how to make money online mm. and this is their way of making money online and yeah it's, it's kind of like a very I meta. never <laughs> right it's like the cycle and i never wanted to do any of this so this was clear for me um but yeah with the to content I was passionate about I always was a bit uh, holding back publishing some stuff here and there and then about two years ago 2019 I think I, re I started again I opened another blog I created my own website and just gave myself the freedom that this is going to be a space where I can publish what I want it doesn't have a direct clear direction to where I mm. wanted to go I just want to see where it goes and I didn't want to put the pressure on myself to have to do anything. And with this coming, then it also started that I wanted to take some videos. And at the time was also the time when it was became easily doable for anyone to implement coil and web monetization into a website. So suddenly this made so much sense. So because I was reading a lot about it, every single news that was coming out. And then I had this website and then I thought, hey, now actually you putting it into um and to practice i might be one of the earliest ones to actually see this new kind of technology um and back then i remember it was for me still and i think that's also what was motivating me to apply for the grant for the web and uh, for the project that i'm working on now just to see that um if of course it needs someone who is subscribed to coil but i can write a small blog post and five minutes later the, after the person has read it, I can get a small stream coming and I get an email notification or back then it was with the XRP tip board. So I was checking on my own, <laughs> but just seeing that there's movement, that there's something happening yeah. is really motivating. So this really gave me the motivation. Of course, also the community around Coil. Um, then people were uh motivating each other to make more content they were giving each other feedback so i still think the the community is a great thing um but uh for the content creation um i think it got really sparked for me 
intro to web monetization. I still con don't consider myself a full-time content creator. If if somebody asks me now, I, I still say I'm in e-commerce. I'm freelancing on the side. Yeah, yeah. And content creation is just a small thing. Um, but I see the potential because I also see that, um, and that's what the project that I'm working on is. Uh, it's about sharing knowledge. Yeah. Which I think is the biggest one of the biggest things that the internet was made for. Yeah. But um, it's so is difficult. that is that like educational content around web monetization specifically, or is it more kind of just broader how how we uh, can take a new approach to the the blogs and vlogs where we see people giving out kind of advice um, and help? Yeah. yeah. So for me, um, I, I what I'm working on now is basically I want to fill a small gap um, that I have seen which was the, as I just said, the call community is a very enthusiastic uh, community of content creators. And many of the people that I met there and whose uh, blog posts I'm reading are people who have never been blogging before coming to call. So for them, this whole idea of web monetization has excited them so much about creating that they actually just started creating because of it. Yeah. Um, and but what I saw is for me, call was never about the blogging platform that it has, because for me, the biggest uh, vision that I have, maybe we talk about this later, is that one day you just uh, this streaming live payments to each other while reading or watching each other's content. is just becoming such a normal thing. So for me, it was also clear that having my own website, my own space um, mm. is for me the goal. And I think for every content creator, um, having their own space, ideally not even bound to a big platform like YouTube, like maybe in the future people have their own channels, but it's not hosted on Google servers, but it's in a, some decentralized network. Mm. And so... Yeah, it's quite interesting. I was talking to um, uh, guys who are building a decentralized metaverse and they mm. really, really kind of emphasize the point about owning your own space rather than being attached to like a youtube or a or yeah. a, a even a like a a blogger platform type thing um yeah. but they they run their own nodes and so you have complete control over who comes in and out and yeah, yeah everything like is it i think it's a really interesting space to be in yeah. so yeah so are you kind of so you're running a blog at the mm -hmm. moment with web monetization kind of uh, it's enabled hard. so it's, it's web monetized yes. and it's about content how, how you create content creators for the people coming in um so the my blog i would say is just uh, my personal stuff what i'm writing about so uh, one part of my e-commerce project is a print on demand business yep. so i'm sharing some strategies i share my income reports there i also include a monthly coil income report because I want people who discover about call to also if they think about okay is this actually a legit monetization way because i think today you cannot or at least from my experience cannot tell anyone that yeah you can completely scrap your ad revenue and just install coil and your life is going to be great because yeah. people it's still a very small community it's a niche product that is still under development and a lot of stuff needs to be done to make it as user friendly as possible so I just want to keep this income report running so that we can see a difference. And what I want to show, because I got a lot of people from the coil community every now and then, especially from the bloggers um, in the scene, reaching out to me like, hey, I like your blog. I, I like the design you made. Blah. I would also like to make my own website. And my uh, blog is running on WordPress, which yep. in itself is... it's can be fairly complicated, but it's already a great platform for anyone who wants to set up a website to do so. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I got questions and then people started doing it and they kept asking me. And so I saw, okay, there's a bunch of creators here who would like to set up their own website to have their own space on the internet instead of only posting on Coil. And then I thought, okay, maybe what if I could, um, or then, I mean, of course, I even shared some uh, information about online courses that I had watched myself or that I saw, but um, most of them were either um, on some paid platform like Skillshare or something. 
And then somehow this idea came to me, like, wouldn't it be nice if a platform either like Skillshare or even better a website of someone that you like where he or she is offering knowledge in form of a video course, for example, that you could just, because you're a call subscriber or maybe in the future, it's just the web monetization thing under any provider that offers it, that you could just have access to this knowledge on demand without having to worry about, I need to pay a one-time fee because what, um, as I'm, I will say, have consumed a fairly, a fairly big amount of knowledge from courses through learning how to do e-commerce and how to run um, businesses so I can live from anywhere. A lot of the information around that is on the internet and it's uh, shared on websites where you have to pay for a course with a one-time fee. And not too often, but every now and then it happens that you buy something and you just don't like it because it doesn't click with you. And also for content, I have realized because in the past I was always thinking, hmm, somebody has already been doing this or somebody is already doing this. Um, and I never, I always thought, okay, there's no need for me to do any content because everything is done already. Yeah. But the more I also realized that it's really not about what is already done, like not the topic, but who is presenting it because one person can explain something in one way and 50% of people gets it. And for the other 50%, it's still the same mystery as before. They just need someone else to explain it in another way. Yeah, I um, think that's it. That's it with content creation in general. Like you just have to remember that you bring your own unique take to it, your own unique experiences yeah. and no one else can deliver it in the way that you are going to deliver it when you deliver it sort of thing. So yeah, I yeah. think, I, I remember you were kind of saying earlier that, um, yeah, probably like perfectionism in a way kind of stopped you kind of continuing yeah. before, yeah, but yeah. It, it is quite a, a hurdle to get over just to throw it, throw it out there. But I think it will take, you know, a few of to any content creator, just, just keep at it for like 50 episodes. If you're doing a podcast or, yeah. you know, 50 videos or 50 blog posts or something like that, just keep, yeah. keep at it and it will get better and i think that's probably yeah. one of the main things i've learned from doing it um is that you bit you slowly kind of work out bits find your own voice yeah. and that's, kind of yeah take it from there sort of thing yeah that's precisely right and from that where did i want to go now wait i lost my red string um so yeah my idea to sharing knowledge then i i heard about this grant for the web and um, wanted to submit something that would help the community that is already aware of web monetization, which in for me now and still is the call community yeah. to get access to building their own websites so that they can reach out to more other people. Because the for me, the situation right now is a little bit, uh, especially if um, content creators are just focusing on what's already going on on coil is that you're preaching to people who have already seen the light basically so and it's it stays this nice ecosystem but i mean ultimately everyone in the space wants to see more and more people coming so that it just becomes a sustainable ecosystem um, between users and because more content will attract more users more users will attract more creators and now it's just this scene where it's still quite small so for users the, you need to be an enthusiast and an early adopter to really consider this an investment in the future whereas yeah. the majority of people will not join until they really see the benefit as in a lot of content that's being available and this kind of ties in with my project idea i mean i'm just starting small i want to make a small course platform on my website yeah. where the first course that I'm going to be offering is how to build your own WordPress blog. But I want to make it in a way um, that people can access this course through Coil. They don't need to sign up in this particular way. They yeah. can just click a button, log in with Coil, have full access and stream um, payments to me while they're watching. But this also means there's never something, not a one-time payment fee. I don't need to... Uh, offer anything in a particular way and I want 
to use this in a way so that somebody who is curious about setting up a blog um, gets the idea of web monetization like from the get-go because I know if you um, browse in Reddit, uh, sub subreddits about blogging, the same questions from people who are beginning are also the same for WordPress. It's always the same questions. Yeah. <laughs> and I know that these people will have the same um, feeling that I will have once they get this one email notification or this one swipe on their phone to see that the XRP or whatever currency they will be choosing to receive balance has changed even by 0 0.0001. Like yeah, just yeah. that there's a change will already give people a lot of motivation and to keep going and hopefully to participate more in this ecosystem. Yeah. Um, so I try no, to find sure. a way that ties think... in with what it's there, but also to reach out because that's the biggest problem I see right now. Yeah, I think that's one of the hardest things is so you're producing content, but then you still have this problem that all startups face in a way, which is going from zero, i.e. no revenue to one, where you've yeah. made just one dollar or something online, something as low yeah. as that. And that yeah. really, you, it, when you're reading all these, all these books, like, um, oh, like, oh, well, all of them, <laughs> I, I can't think of ones off the top of my head, but I've read countless ones that are like, that was the moment like my eyes were like, wow, this could actually work. And I mm -hmm. think if you could get people to that place faster in a way, we'd get right. a lot more buying and a lot less kind of drop off from content creators. So you talk about supply and demand. I, I see this as a real boost to supply side because I think people will see that stream come in, even though it's yeah. only a small amount, you know. That's the thing. I mean, nobody, <laughs> um, I think... <laughs> That's also the the learning curve I had with with e-commerce and anything online. I mean, people always talk big numbers, but yeah. they never share how long it takes to get there. So every person starting on YouTube has this dream: I'm gonna make one hundred thousand next year. But then, yeah, you also realize, okay, this person has already made videos for five years yeah. until now. They've reached a point where their subscriber count is going like exponentially. But yeah. it took them an endless amount to do so but at least web monetization for example i think with with youtube it is i think you can only web monet uh, only monetize your youtube channel with i think 1000 subscribers yeah. yeah so for someone who is just starting this is, seems already like unbearably far away and so you need to reach 1000 and then have this other metrics and then your amount will be also just very very small and also if you're in a very, what I, um, where I see one of the biggest, maybe we're all already going a bit towards the vision of web monetization. Um, the problem I see with many things online is if you, for people who have found their niche, like mm. the YouTube channel that is only talking about, what do I like to watch? Uh, food, like food and traveling then this person will always have content because this person can only travel a bit and then eat something different and make a video about it. But there's many people who make great content that is for me, like the plumbing to many startups, like maybe the developer who is answering the questions that people have on Stack Overflow, maybe yeah. the person ask, answering questions on Quora, but or having a website about Excel spreadsheet tutorials so this is the sort of content this person will never build a following of a hundred thousand or a million subscribers even though over the lifetime of this one article or this one tutorial they made they will have tons of traffic tons of people watching their stuff but the thing is their content solves a problem so ideally people come read the solution and they leave me as a as I follow a travel food blogger on YouTube, I will come back because I like to see his content. I come back and come back. I'm the perfect viewer for him because I just like his personality. I like watching his videos. So I will come back no matter what he's doing. But for the Excel guy, I just see he solves my problem. I go there and I never go back again because mm. then it also means his, his, uh, his tutorial was really good. It solved my problem forever. Um, but this person has no real good way to monetize. They cannot start a Patreon community. They cannot, uh, I mean, 
any other monetization nobody will subscribe for five bucks a month to one excel blog because yeah. how often are you going to need it maybe twice a year maybe once a month depending how often you use excel maybe never but this once in a decade where you need to help your uh, grandfather on something i don't know but with map monetization if everyone would use it it will also mean that this person would get this tiny 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 amount streamed money from every visitor who's yeah. coming to watch this tutorial and then the whole amount would make probably enough for this person to maybe live of it or to have a nice side project income um so for me web monetization also have the has the potential to free or to to break this um or to open up monetization methods to people who are not super niche on something who cannot build a community around their one passion because they just have something that's not super exciting but still very valuable and yeah, I, see I, think there's it, a big... I think you've hit on an interesting point there and i've never really thought about it like that which is mm. that web monetization does bring this kind of micro content maybe we call it like the tweets and the replies on stack at sub, right. sub stack and all that into a realm where it could be monetized in some way yeah. um even though yeah like like you say if it's like an excel tutorial even even just my experience of youtube like you have to have like stuff like um you have to get people clicking on the thumbnail so how are you going to do that are you going to make make this like crazy thumbnail that kind of shows it you keep yeah. getting pushed to get more and more click through so you keep making more and more clickbaity stuff yeah. and there's been a few quite interesting videos on you know how how you optimize that and you know you need to put big numbers in the title and stuff like that but someone who's yeah like you say uh, probably an ex more more so an expert than other other people ever following in the field answering on sub uh, stack overflow um yeah. yeah how you know is there a, is there a way in in on the internet to kind of monetize that in even in a very small way but i think there must be so much micro content out there that yeah. It, yeah it would be really interesting to see how that could all fit together in one beautiful web 3.0 sort of thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. And apart from that the one thing that um, so where where my project what it aims to why i call it yeah. like a new approach to sharing knowledge like a, a video course is not a new approach yeah but what i would my vision is that in the future that you will never have to think about am i gonna uh, buy this guy's course or this guy's ebook or something okay ebook is maybe let's stick with courses for now um that you don't have to think about it you can just you have access to it by default if you are signed up with your whatever preferred web monetization provider and this then also means that stuff like clickbait or um, the best marketer is not necessarily gonna win the most market share because it if everyone has access to everything then it all comes back down to what matters the most and that's the quality of the content so there's a lot of courses out there that are put together they have great marketing you find them in your facebook feed because they perfectly mastered facebook ads to target you at the right time with the right budget and they know exactly what you need and then you think that well this is great and you get maybe you get sold you buy into it and then you realize the packaging was much nicer than the content inside so it for me web monetization could be this equalizer where content quality will become the main focus because then if you if the great marketer is doing an amazing marketing job by like everyone come to me he yeah. will also get the money from web monetization as in streams but then if his content is sucks everybody will just leave after one minute and say like this is worthless yeah, whereas yeah. The, whereas the guy um who's maybe not as good in marketing but he can just publish his stuff um somewhere and i mean if you tell people you can just access because we have what monetization access you you already have access to my stuff and if you like it you will support me more and more if you do my full course you pro you will support me with the whole amount of the course basically but if um if you don't like it or if you want to take a break then you're not going to be paying for it extra um, yeah so this this is something that i would like to see because what you just touched on this whole 
like clickbait is the is a good buzzword to summarize everything. <laughs> I see it. It's a huge waste of time. Too many people are wasting time into how can we get people to click and how can we get them to buy something that they probably know is not worth it. I mean, somebody who puts 80% of the time into finding the perfect YouTube thumbnail and title and necessarily then only has 20% left for the content of the video. Yeah. And I think that's, that, that's the wrong way around. That's not how it should be. And yeah. yeah. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a big challenge, but I, I think one of the things that I've really liked seeing, and I think I've said this in pretty much every episode we've recorded, is the breadth and width of the grant for the web, uh, yeah. who they funded, and the scope of the projects in there. Um, to anyone that's kind of listening on this, I think it is well worth taking a look at the grant for the web um, website, uh, grantfortheweb.org. Yeah. Um, have a look at some of the grantees and and just see what what we're kind of talking about because there there are there is this hundred million dollar fund that is kind of willing to help experiments like myself and Benny are doing in this space to hopefully yeah. get rid of and solve some of these problems that we see with clickbait and jumping in and out of stuff and um, yeah I think it's a really exciting space to be. Um, yeah. So yeah, just kind of breaking maybe from Grant for the Web. But what what have you have you seen uh, other crypto projects that are interesting or stuff outside of crypto that that is really interesting at the moment? Um, I think what's for me quite interesting is definitely also I mean as someone who's running a website, forms of uh, running websites on a decentralized network. Okay, yeah, that's that's I'm. Um, I haven't tried anything myself, but um, when it comes to thinking about web monetization, I think this at some point will also play uh, a significant role as to, uh, yeah, uh, just another uh, road or another milestone towards full decent decentralization. Yeah. And in terms of uh, crypto, I think besides, I've, I've stepped a bit back from from reading about crypto stuff all the time from like going all in now it's a more the yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try to see because there's still lots of noise in the space and i uh, especially this year i put my want to focus more on on building stuff and working on stuff rather than getting all the information um but um, in general what for me what i would like to see and maybe web monetization can be a part of it but crypto as a whole um, I think for me, the most interesting is this whole interoperability of stuff and yeah. ties yeah. in with um, digital assets. Like, uh, I like the idea of thinking, I was talking to about this with someone the other day, like, for example, the amount of different loyalty points that you have on different platforms that yeah. maybe we can find a way to give value to each of those and then exchange them with each other because... I don't know, using especially digital services a lot, you seem to gather points here and uh, miles here, tokens there and some stars and hearts here, but yeah. never enough to actually make use of it. So, but maybe there's this, maybe we will see some solutions where I can share, where I can trade my, I don't know, Starbucks points for airline miles and somebody who has airline miles can i don't know can fund his web monetization wallet with it and something like this um so yeah. i like this idea this is what um that things getting more connected but not beyond the information level yeah and to the value level this is i mean this is what crypto is basically all about but yeah yeah those are the smaller things where i try to find things that spark my interest yeah oh cool that sounds, yeah, I, I like I like the idea of that because yeah, I think we're all kind of the same. We have loads of stuff sitting around air mile. Well, <laughs> I used to travel a fair bit. Now I have air mile sitting in the account, so it'd be nice to swap those out for people that might need it or something if they have to travel. And yeah, like yeah, it'd be interesting to see if there is a solution. I don't know how you'd ascri uh, ascribe a value to that, but I'm sure some smart person will figure it out. <laughs> Yeah that's, yeah that's not that's not for me to decide no. <laughs> it's definitely something if somebody had an idea i would definitely get interested in yeah, it. yeah yeah oh cool 
Okay, great. Yeah, I think uh, that's been really interesting. Um, I I think it's been a really yeah great conversation to chat about how how where we see stuff going and um, yeah, it's been uh, thank you. I suppose thank you so much for coming on um, and uh, giving us your thoughts on it. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It was a yeah. pleasure. And yeah, I guess <laughs> okay. looking forward to the other episodes and when they're coming out. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll definitely be out soon. Um, yeah, so wrapping up, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for tuning cool. in to Just a Mean a podcast where we talk about the future of making money on the web. Uh, please do get involved. Give us a like, send us a comment and a review. And please also subscribe so you get the um, latest episodes as they come out. And uh, yeah, spread the words to your friends. Okay, cheers, Benny. Okay, see you, Greg. Bye. See you.